Hey everyone, Ariel Labs here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Seiko Astron. Oftentimes I call this the Astron GPS, but the technical name is just the Astron. The reason I call it the Astron GPS, in addition to the fact that it does receive signals from GPS satellites, is that the Astron name is the name that Seiko used for the very first course wall quartz watch ever back in 1969. So when you say Seiko Astron, you could just as easily be referring to the first uh, Seiko quartz watch and not this one. So I tend to call it the Astron GPS, but uh, it is technically just the Astron. So what, what Seiko did a couple years ago is they came out with this sort of homage piece to commemorate, uh, I think, 40 years of the um, original Astron. And then they brought back the Astron name um, for uh, this watch. Um, which is the, a new generation of timepieces, which is quart, it's a quartz-based watch, and it receives signals from GPS. Now, Seiko isn't the first to do it. Um, it's actually, this technology has been around for a little while, but it's been quite, quite rare and not in all, at all mainstream. This is, in my opinion, the first ever mainstream watch which um, is designed to go ahead and, and make it so that you can be accurate anywhere in the world um, by receiving signals from uh, a satellite. Um, Citizen came out with the Wave watch um, uh, a little bit before this one, but the first one was a limited edition, um, and there's some new ones, but so I would say that this watch um, by Seiko was pretty much uh, the first one, but that, that doesn't really matter. Anyways, so I've been living with this watch for a while, and I really like it, but it's important to discuss a little bit about what's going on here and what it does. Now, first of all, the watch itself, this version of it, um, is in a black IP coated steel case and these are big it's 47 millimeters wide and all of them are but there's different versions of the watch some come um, on a handsome uh, metal bracelet there's versions in uh, titanium there's one that's titanium with some ceramic links so there's there's more and more variety this is a very very sporting one one thing they all have in common is this ultra legible dial which is super three-dimensional you can tell there um, it's very very deep the hands are actually raised up quite a bit. The hour markers are kind of floating around there and they're connected to this sort of like inner flange ring. It's actually uh, just a cool looking dial. You know, there's a lot going on, but it's still extremely, extremely legible, um, which I really, really appreciate. And that's and that's really a fantastic thing. So I think Seiko's done a good job at making it look um, just just really handsome, but also technical and cool. And it's, it's a joy to wear and read. It's just not, it's not complicated. It is a little bit more complicated to use it. Um, and that's sort of a running theme with a lot of Japanese watches, especially the, the more complicated ones. They're all useful and they do a lot of stuff, but sometimes they're a little bit less user-friendly than you'd like. So this is another example of a watch where I really recommend that if you get one, you spend some time with a manual because you're not going to know everything for sure. Okay, so basically what it does is it is it is able to see receive signals from GPS satellites in order to update the time as well as the time zone. And that's that's a crucial element there because what you really want to do is not just know what the correct time is, but where what the correct time is where you are. And that's that's a very important thing. The watch also receives light through the dial in order to to power the battery. So this is what they call a, a Seiko solar watch um, because it uses light to power the battery and you don't need to change the battery. Now what makes GPS technology important in a watch? Well, prior to this, you had watches that received signals from atomic clocks. So there's about six atomic clocks in the world that send out radio signals. And if you are within the area of receiving the signals, um, you can go ahead and have a watch which is accurate to atomic clock time, which is great. But again, those signals only exist in some parts of the world, not all of the world. So with GPS, assuming that you have line of sight to the sky, you can go ahead and be, have the accurate time anywhere in the world. I've also found, and this is really important, that this watch connects to the signal much easier than I'd ever experienced with watches connecting to the atomic clock radio signals. Those were, um, I mean, I still enjoy those and I still use those watches quite a bit, but those are just not nearly as reliable. And so I, I've been to a lot of places 
um, with this watch and I've tested it out and I have to say that definitely um, it, it goes ahead and it, it connects rather reliably. But again, you have to basically be outdoors to do so. If you're indoors, chances are it's not going to connect because you know it can't use a ton of power. I mean, we're talking about a watch battery, so it can't use a ton of power to connect. So it really needs to be in an environment where there's a clear line of sight. But I'll just show you what happens right now. In order to go ahead and sync, you push this top button here down for a few seconds. It's like six seconds. Okay. Then it goes to the top there. Now it starts to look. Okay. Now the hand will then move because it can find up to, I think, six satellites. Okay. So it's trying right now. It's probably not going to connect again because we're indoors. And then on the side here, there's a little Y and a little N and it'll tell you. Okay, so no, it goes. It went to end there. I didn't. That, that's not surprising to me at all. Um, it wasn't able to connect because again we're indoors. But once I go outside, it's it's really really easy. So you basically do that when you go to a new place in order to um, sync up. And then you have here this dial here. You can see reference cities as well as the uh, UTC or otherwise known as GMT. Um, uh, the times there. You also have a subsidiary dial here, so you can see a second time zone. And this little sort of uh, dial here offers you different types of information um, such as turning on or off uh, daylight saving time, um, seeing uh, what the power reserve is, things of that nature, and then you of course have the date over here. Using this watch is, is not exactly as intuitive as you would think. So for example, you have a crown um, like on a lot of other watches and you, and you go ahead and you unscrew the crown and you have actually two positions, like you pull it out, there's one, two, okay? Now the thing which is kind of funny about this is this isn't used to set the time like at all <laughs> actually um, you use this to put it in a mode but then you use these pushers here to set the time so when it's pulled out twice for example and I think you turn it um, I forget what happens you actually one of the one of these moves actually when you put it in once you actually adjust the date which I think is funny there's a hand over there um, what, how does it go I think you can adjust the date in both ways um, oh, actually, no. I don't. Actually, I don't think turning the crown does anything. I think putting it in and out in that position does something. But I don't think turning the crown does anything. So I pulled it out one time here, and I'm pushing this button. There we go. And so this, what I really like a lot, actually, is when you pull it out one time, you see that second dial down there. You can adjust the second time zone by the minute in both directions. So you don't just have to have it like be the exact same uh, minute you are, just a different hour. You can change that second time zone to be up to the minute of what you want um, that time to be, which I think is really, really great. That's really cool. And that's also especially useful when you are in one of those strange time zones, right? That's like a half hour or a 15 minute difference. I mean, that's rare for me. I don't think I've ever actually been in one of those, but if I was, I'd be happy that if I wanted to set my home time there, I didn't have to do it to that strange um, time zone they have there, I could do it to whatever I wanted to do um, back home that, that was, you know, a completely different time. And if it was a traditional GMT watch, I could only do it um, by the hour. So if it was four o'clock where I was, but it was like, you know, 1.45 a.m. back home, it would be impossible to do that with a traditional GMT watch. If you pull the crown out twice here, um, yeah, that's where you change the date. <laughs> so you push that push over there. See, it went to the first. I'm going to go back to the 31st there. Um, there we go. And I like that you can set the date in both directions. So it's kind of a quirky thing where you have this crown, but it's actually not used to set the time. You actually don't turn it to do anything. You only turn it to screw it back in. Um, if you want to change the time zone, um, uh, what you do here is you push this pusher here for a bit. Let's go ahead. Okay, and then you get the seconds hand stops and it tells you the time. So I'm in Los Angeles, so it's pointing to LAX, and I can push up. There I'm going to a different time. You can see the hands are moving on the dial. I'm going to go back to, to Los Angeles. And that's really, really cool um, that you can just go ahead and change your time zone there. So it, once you've, you've synced the time to the correct um, time, the correct time zone and the direct, direct and the correct time, you can just go ahead and easily change the time zone without having to, to deal with losing a minute here or there or anything like that. If you push this button down, you can see this hand here moves. And one thing it does is it tells you um, what the power reserve is, which I like. And then you also use this pusher, I believe, to change daylight saving. Daylight saving is one of the things that does not automatically change. So if you go to a new time zone and it is daylight saving, that's something you need to know and you'll have to um, adjust for that accordingly. It's not hard to do, but it's just something that, that you have to do. The GPS satellites won't tell you that. So let's put this thing on. Um, this version comes on the uh, the silicon strap. I think it's silicon. Maybe it's rubber. I'm pretty sure it's silicon. 
Um, and it's, it's a cool looking watch. It's big, but it wears, it doesn't wear too huge. So there we go. That's 47 millimeters wide. This is the steel version, um, but it is black coated. I think this is a cool looking watch. I mean, I've really enjoyed this thing. Um, you know, one of the good things about this is, is you just sort of like learn the basic functionality and you're going to be fine for like 90, 90, 95% of the time. Once in a while, you want to do something different with it, like, uh, you know, change daylight saving, um, or, or do one of those like incremental time zones which which is fine but i really recommend looking at the instructions with a watch like this like i've been studying them and and <laughs> it's written very technically actually i think seiko has some probably more easy to understand video tutorial videos and things of that nature but um this is definitely a watch you're gonna have to sit down with and put your engineering hat on um detailing and, and the quality is good i like here this buckle it's in metal it's big it's a seiko you have a fold over clasp here not just like um you know like a basic uh, type of buckle here and, th and th those are nice details to have on a watch it really has a nice high-end feel to it and it is it is a higher-end Seiko watch this is not like a $200 timepiece um, this is a this is definitely a more robust and and um, you know luxury feeling um, type of watch with a lot of technology in it for me this is a great travel watch um, I love the technology I love how simple it is I love that we can get the signal anywhere in the world um, and because it is a quartz watch, you know, you know, it's going to be accurate and that's that's something important to have I mean, even when I travel with my mechanical watches I always have a quartz watch backup just in case something happens because you know You let a watch sit for a few days and the power runs out or something like that It's just great to have a solar powered quartz watch to take with you So again, this is the Seiko Astron or as I call it the Seiko Astron GPS um, particular version retails for I think $1,850. The prices go up to about $2,300 um, in titanium on the bracelet, but um, it is it is definitely an investment for a quartz watch, but I think it's very, very cool. It's great technology, um, and it's also very useful, and you can see the full review on a blog to watch soon. Thanks.